and welcome to the Daily Space Weather. Smasho here, your host of the Smash News Network, least busted name and news, just bringing you the most detailed imagery of the sun and the most comprehensive space weather you'll find anywhere in the world. We've got coronal mass ejections to cover. It's exciting stuff here. You may see some activity kicking off down here. I would tend to agree. This is a composite 24-hour video from SDO, the Solar Dynamics Observatory. And when we're talking CMEs, we got some interesting ones for sure. Are they earthly directed? We'll let you know later in the video. Check it out. A little bit of ejecta. Also a sun diving comet showing up right down here. So lots of exciting things going on in space once again. As there is always news if you pay attention to the details. Yes. Also, a new sunspot has recently risen in the southeast. It's another large sunspot. So we've got lots. Lots of sunspots. The radio flux above the 81-day moving average. We'll get to that momentarily. First, the colorized magnetogram from SDO. We show it most days on the channel. By the way, we make just this side of nothing to put the content on YouTube. So if you want to help us out by doing some of your shopping through our affiliate link, you'll find it below the video as well as on the homepage at smashomash.com to our hemp lucid shop. The most popular product is the water soluble CBD tincture. Try that out and uh, please enjoy responsibly. Press like, press subscribe, press share. If you enjoy the content, tell your friends and foes about us. We don't believe YouTube is promoting the content. Yes. Maybe our thumbnails aren't cool enough. What do you think? Let us know in the comments what you think of the thumbnails. At least they're distinctive, I would say, wouldn't you? Also, a new playlist recently put up that we will refer to later in the video as well, the 12 Days of Smash Miss. Consider becoming a member of the Smash Team at smashomash.com slash smash team. If you'd like to support the content, we just launched it in October of 2021. And yeah, it's our subscription services site. It's a little bit better than Patreon. You can find our links on the Smash Team page as well at smashomash.com slash smash team. So help us out over there with some clicks, perhaps visit us on social media, tell your friends and foes about us. Visit us on Instagram. You'll see some content you'll see no place else by doing that. Smashomash.com slash smash team. We are still on Patreon as well. Credit crawl coming before the end of the year. And let's get to volcanoes. So we've got Stromboli continuing to erupt here. Or I guess it's some new eruptions there from Stromboli. Sakurajima also erupting flight level 090 over Sakurajima. Mauna Loa's uh, lava advance has slowed down a little bit. It's still only advanced about 200 meters closer to Saddle Road, the Daniel Inoue Highway. So no major changes happen there at Mauna Loa. Popocatépetl exploding. No indication of the ash plume size there over central Mexico. Please do not pull vault the caldera. Fuego exploding, flight level 150. Nevado de Ruiz volcanic ash not observed. Sangue in Ecuador exploding, flight level 200. Revenador exploding, flight level 150. It's only a mild explosion. It's a 15,000 foot plume of volcanic ash. Don't pull vault that caldera either. Also, Cotopaxi exploding in Ecuador. That's a flight level 220, a 22,000-foot ash plume, and we're unable to detect Sabancaya. Down there in Peru, the likelihood of it erupting is kind of high, and let's move to earthquakes. This is the past 90 days, and no major quirk. No, blah, blah, blah. No merger quirks over the past 24 hours. Here's the, ver here's the earthquake render for the past 24 the largest quirk was only in the mid fur magnitude range. There was a 5.1 at Taiwan. There was a 5.4 at the Solomon Islands. Remember, folks, any earthquake can be a foreshock, so keep track of that. I stand corrected. The highest quake was a 5.8 at Indonesia. There was also a 5.5 there. There's that 5.5. Russia had a 5.5 near Zurib. Tonga had a 5.1. 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 Tonga had a 5.1.
Tonga, near the earthquake, the deep earthquake capital of the world, and also the Mid-Atlantic Ridge, the northern portion of there, south of the Reconis Ridge, had a 5.3. And let's get back to space. This is the past 24 hours from SDO. It's our house favorite wavelength. And let's look at some additional wavelengths here, as we've always made sure that we provided the atop notch solar imagery. This is a great composite here, ionized helium in 304 angstroms and ionized iron in 193 angstroms. Some huge filaments here. Uh, the Musk filament remains intact. The Pelosi filament remains intact. Also, the Eugene Bagashov filament remains intact. And this one down here that ejected, I believe that was the AOC. Correct me if I'm wrong in the comments. The 10.7 centimeter radio flux, the most proportional data set we have to sunspot number, is now at 149 solar flux units, I believe it is. 149. There's the one-year graph to put it in context. The black line is the radio flux. The red line is the sunspot number. And we'll see a little increase in the sunspot number again today with that new large sunspot group rising. Space Weather Enthusiast Dashboard claims it's 148 solar flux units for the 10.7 centimeter radio flux. And of course, they are forecasting a little bit of geomagnetic storm conditions here late in the day today. I'm not so sure I agree with that one. This coronal hole wind stream has been kind of weak, although we do have a high speed coronal hole wind stream. We saw exactly what we forecasted yesterday, by the way, the KP5. It happened right after we dropped yesterday's video. So, next, the Earth's magnetic moment from space portion of the video. This is our geospace magnetosphere movie depicting magnetohydrodynamic pressure out to about 12 Earth diameters. It's for the last four hours. Earth's magnetic moment from space. That's what's likely going on according to the Space Weather Modeling Framework model. And here's what's going on on the ground. Ground magnetic perturbations and things are looking quite calm. I doubt we'll have any other significant major pulse from that coronal hole high-speed stream. Let us know in the comments what you think. That is the last four hours of Earth's magnetic moment from the ground. Ground magnetic perturbations, geospace delta B. So here's the planetary K index. Again, yesterday, right after we dropped our video, it went to KP5, just as we forecasted. It was an increase in the magnetic field. And that was the main thing that caused it. We had a huge increase in the magnetic field strength that went all the way up to 18 nanotesla. And we had a strong negative BZ, which is this red line. That's the vertical component of the magnetic field measured at Lagrange point one. Solar wind density made it all the way up to about 50 protons per cubic centimeter, a little bit higher than I anticipated. And the solar wind speed was a little bit lower than I anticipated. The peak of that was around 560 kilometers per second. Current conditions are about 544 kilometers per second for the solar wind speed, about 11 protons per cubic centimeter for the solar wind density. And let's move into the magnetic portion. Here is the GOES magnetometer readings. That's the GOES 16 and GOES 17. And we can expect this to look a little smoother in the coming days here as we can expect the subsiding of that coronal hole high-speed stream. Next, let's take a look at the top view ecliptic plane field plot. And we do see a North Pole current sheet showing up there to our east. So that may be coming back. We'll have to keep an eye on that. And when I say eye on, well, pardon the pun. Let's take a look at the line of sight field plot next. Here the sun's B field is depicted in blue. North solar polar field in green, south solar polar field in red. And that brings us to our line of sight coronal hole plot. So we do actually have some north pole oriented coronal holes here in the southern portion of the Earth facing solar disk and some new south pole oriented coronal holes ahead of that new sunspot in the southeast. So th that, those should get a little bit more defined here. These sunspots, these coronal holes down here. And this one here is actually North Pole oriented, believe it or not. It's not super well defined. It may get a little more defined in the next couple days. Keep in mind, folks, that the solar corona is quite bumpy. And that moves us to sunspots. So again, we've got a new sunspot having risen down here. That'll be known as sunspot 3160, as far as I can tell, right down here. 
3160. The likelihood of major flares remains as we've got lots of magnetically complex sunspot groups. And we're showing the most likely place for major flares is from sunspot 3153, which I thought would be named two sunspots. It's named only one sunspot, but in any case, I would tend to agree as that is the only place we've seen some flaring in the past 24. Let's take a look at sunspots here in more depth. So here is our SDO magnetometer. Those groups look mostly stable. Let's switch to the SDO continuum. That is the past 24 hours, and I'm not seeing any major changes. Are you? Let us know in the comments what you think. So lots of sunspots, lots of big sunspots, and an additional group there rising in the southeast. You'll see it right at the end, showing up there in your lower left of your screen. Here we've added 131 angstroms because there was a little bit of flaring from this 3153 group down here. Let's zoom out to show the full disk view. And good morning, Cookie Spacey. Next, looking at energetic particles. We ain't got none. No spikes in the proton flux for a long, long time, several weeks. And there is the GOES X-ray flux there. Uh, largest flare of the past 24 was this C5.88. Peak flux was 1300 yesterday, universal time. And let's take a look at flaring through 94 angstroms SDO wavelength. Likelihood of large flares remains really high, higher than 50%. So far, these sunspot groups have been underperforming in terms of X-ray output. Next, let's take a look at a star chart. We've got Venus and Mercury rising ahead of the, I mean, behind the sun, which make them early evening planets. So go check those out just after sunrise if you have a low horizon and clear skies. That's what's going on over Lehigh Valley, Pennsylvania. That is in-the-sky.org. And thank goodness, in-the-sky.org stands with Ukraine. Oh my God. Thank goodness, I was very concerned. Next, solar system forecast. Here's where things are now, and happy full moon. Full moon. Here's where things will be in a week. As Earth moves around to the lonely side of the, of the sun there, the unpopulated side, I guess people are going to be frightened of that too. Every time we go past Jupiter, people claim Jupiter is going to destroy civilization or something like that. It never happens, and it happens at least once a year. <laughs> anyway, that's where things will be on the 15th. And let's take a look at some of these coronal mass ejections here because we've had some exciting ones. And we streamed them for a long time yesterday on Twitch. If you watch the Twitch channel, twitch.tv slash smash a mash, we're going to show you a clip from that. Since some of you YouTube viewers are too lazy to simply go to a different website, here is today's coronagraph imagery. And you can see some CMEs kicking off as we stream the video. Yes, as we stream. So let's take a look at some more imagery here from Stereo A at Lagrange 5 and the Soho Lasco C3 at Lagrange 1. Stereo A here on your left. And for you new viewers, from the perspective of Stereo A, the Earth would be off on this line. And if you were at Lagrange point one on the Soho Lasco C3, Earth would be behind you. If you were looking at the obscurement disk of the coronagraph. And guess what? Those CMEs are not earthly directed. Not earthly directed. So let's take a look at the last 24. Here's a great zoom in as those CMEs propagate. The AOC filament there propagating in the southwestern limb. We thought we saw the last of the AOC filament, but it decided to hang out and then go for a, a long ride. To quote Tony Montana of Scarface, those magnetic fields are taking you for a long ride, man. 
So great stuff there. Some gravity-defying solar plasma. As gravity loses the war and the AOC filament ejects as we stream. You can also see that sun-diving comet there. Fantastic imagery. It's even actually curving its path a little bit there. See it moving toward the sun, an indication that gravity is indeed real. If you think gravity is not real, let us know in the comments. Keep in mind you may be berated. So here is our stream yesterday. It was a 23-hour stream as I slept in today. And this is uh, the great AOC filament there just hanging out. And then whoops, see ya. Also a CME happening there in the Northwest. So that's part of the reason why we stream to Twitch on the regs. Let's take a look at filaments here. The likelihood of additional CMEs remains, well, nearly 100%. We've got the Nancy Pelosi filament over here. We've got the Elon Musk filament down here. We've got the Eugene Bagashov filament up here. And let us know if you've got filaments that you'd like named, like perhaps this one or this one over here. And uh, anyway, again, the likelihood of additional CME is nearly 100%. Here's the last 24 hours from SDO, 304 angstroms wavelength by itself. That's ionized helium. Great at showing those filaments. As you can see, some eruptions happening there in the past day. And let's take a look at the past couple hours from the GO-16 SUVI with its great wide field of view, part of the reason why we stream it. That is the past about two and a half hours. Lots and lots of filaments pointed at Earth. Next, we've got our bonus feature segment. Our bonus feature segment begins with the satellite charging hazards, and we don't see any. It's smooth sailing for satellites at the moment. Let's take a look at things like the electron flux next. And there you can see these cratered levels of electron flux as we typically see with coronal hole high-speed streams. No surprises there to our regular viewers. And here is the GOES, I mean the uh, NOAA forecast for the relativistic electrons. The green boxes are the forecast. The yellow diamonds are the observation. Here is the one-year chart to put that in context, the greater than 2 mega electron volt electron fluence. Next, we'll take a look at the F ionosphere layer. That is where the GOES-16 and GOES-17 make their radiographic measurements. From their geosynchronous orbits, the F layer is located at about 300 kilometers of altitude. And we do indeed see some continuing anomalies here. So this is the raw vibrational frequency data from Australian Government Bureau of Meteorology. And don't worry, we're going to show you the anomaly gram. There is the anomaly gram. That's anomaly in megahertz from the 30-day median as we approach the December solstice. Only about two weeks out, less than two weeks out from the first day of winter, the December solstice, or the first day of summer if you're viewing from the southern hemisphere. As you can see, continued anomalies there in the South Atlantic and South America. Uh, of the low frequency variety mainly, but also some rapid swings from low to high frequency. There's the oh, whoops. There's the latest image. That is 1400 universal time ionogram, 1400 universal time anomaly gram. And we'll also take a look at the total electron content forecast. That would be the free electrons between your GPS satellite and your handset. That distance is about 12,500 miles, and those free electrons can cause signal refraction. And that signal refraction can cause GPS errors of thousands of miles. There's a total electron content map by Australian Government Bureau of Meteorology. And here's the animation. And it's quite chaotic there. We've got electrons out of place, a thing that we see regularly during Corona Hole high-speed streams. So you may have some unexpected GPS errors today as a result of that. Just turn on your Wi-Fi location accuracy if you have those capabilities. That should increase the accuracy of your GPS. So lots of GPS errors and some of them sort of out of place occurring at nighttime and around the Arctic regions and so forth. Most of those occur around the equator at noon. 
Next, we've got the latest imagery here, the high-res imagery of the closest star. It looks like that new sunspot is beta class. Let's take a look. And I can't say it is. It looks like it's alpha class, so only one magnetic field orientation there. Only one polarity. There's the rock back for the rest of the data. And we've got lots of beta gamma class sunspot groups. We won't worry about it. Bring on the solar flares. Here's the last imagery from SDO. This is yesterday plus today in three wavelengths. All ionized iron. So this gives great depth. You can see the depth of those coronal holes and the height of some portions of the corona there. 335, 193 plus 94 angstroms. And it's time, time to do meteorology and chew bubble gum. And we're all out of bubble gum. But before we go to the meteorology segment, you're all invited to join us on Twitter. Yes, the utterly broken platform rife with censorship and deboosting, as it's now called in the current news speak. Thanks, Elon, for restoring free speech via continued deboosting of content as we remain stagnant at 339 followers. <laughs> and we're pushing 18,000 tweets. By the way, we've got a link to the 12 Days of Smash Miss pinned there on the Twitter feed, twitter.com slash smash a mash, the platform where people think free speech has been restored because they're utterly, utterly delusional. If you haven't checked out the 12 Days of Smash Miss, it is a playlist on the YouTube channel, youtube.com slash smash a mash slash playlists. We'll refer you to the 12 Days of Smash Miss. Today's, today's uh, let's see, it's the eighth day of Smash Miss today, so today's song will be announced soon. It's Journey to the Center of the Hearse. And by the way, if you uh, want to improve your health, consider becoming a member of the American Better Health Organization, DBA SureMed. The benefits include doctors by phone, counselors by phone, virtual veterinarians, huge discounts like 15 to 50% on dental, huge discounts on vision products, retail and mail order pharmacy, vitamins, labs, MRIs and CT scans, and lots more. That's just the base membership, folks. It also allows you to purchase group insurance. Again, this SureMed base membership is not insurance. It's an association membership with the American Better Health Organization, a nonprofit focused on improving the health of its members. Visit our website also if you refuse to open your cobweb-encrusted wallet and help us out in any monetary fashion. Help us out with clicks by visiting smashamash.com. And welcome to the Neo-Renaissance where we cite facts, which are very controversial. I mean, they've been controversial since 2016 for sure, but now, now that we're in 2022, I think they might even be more controversial. They certainly became increasingly controversial in 2020 when the world decided to undermine every single one of its institutions. So help us out with links. You can find links to the Hemp Lucid Shop, SureMed, our social media, etc., the Smash Team site, all on smashomash.com. And thanks to everybody who has clicked. We opened our own website because, well, pathetic censorship on Facebook. Now, if you haven't seen the merch shop, you can find links to that as well below the video. And the link will send you to our merch shop in order of best-selling. Recently, Do Not Pull Vault the Caldera has upended the other products. Now our best seller is Do Not Pull Vault the Caldera. So that looks like progress in terms of what people are interested in. And of course, our previous best seller contains a word that shall not be said on a YouTube video because free speech is so a thing, right? It's a figment of your imagination. A figment of your imagination. Hey, who cares about the Constitution? <laughs> it's, it's, don't worry, it's a... Uh, it's a private company, even though it's publicly traded. It's free to mislead its investors all it likes, right? So the products make great gifts. Congratulations on surviving a global pandemic. So far, you could say a global scamdemic, perhaps. And today's featured product is a re-release. It's Smasher Price, My First Pandemic. So perhaps pick yourself up a souvenir. Maybe send a gift to your favorite covid iot covid iot yes, it's a real word. It's defined in our Terms Defined playlist, another one of our playlists on the YouTube channel. So perhaps pick up some merch. Again, congratulations on surviving a global pandemic. So far, were you scared and spooked? Did you check out the forum, by the way? Our most popular forum thread ever is one about a specific, uh, a specific germ is all that I'll say. 
You can see the forum at smashamash.com slash forum. If you want to read about our mission, head to smashamash.com slash forum slash mission. You can read all about our mission. Thanks to everybody who's picked up merch. Again, that makes great gifts. If you're not done with your Christmas shopping yet, perhaps send out some from our Red Bubble shop. There is international shipping available. Some of our products even exist as far away as Tasmania. Once again, thanks to everybody who's picked up merch throughout the years. Again, we make just this side of nothing to put the content on YouTube. Next, what we're looking at here are polar jets. These are the polar jet streams, the 250 hectopascal winds of the North Polar region. And they're a little bit chaotic right now. A little bit of chaos happening up there in the North Polar jets. Here are the South Polar jets. And let's take a look at our standard fare here. So this is the, the jet stream scenario for the Eastern world. This is the surface wind scenario for the Eastern world. Powerful low formed between New Zealand and Australia. This is the surface wind scenario for the Western world. Powerful low hanging out in the central North Atlantic. How about the jet streams of the Americas, you ask? You ask, we deliver. Those are the jet streams. We've got a strong high pressure system here over Central South America. That is a counterclockwise rotating Southern Hemisphere anticyclone. Likely clear skies over that region. You can put an H on your map if you want to look like a weatherman. That is a high pressure zone. You can tell by the counterclockwise rotation. Here are the jet streams of the central world, Europe, Africa, and the Middle East. And here are the surface winds. And let's move on here. We don't want the video to be too long. Strong low there continues to be existent in the Bay of Bengal. Continuing on to our clouds and fog. This is clouds and fog over the Western world. As the sun rises over the croissant-shaped planet, NASA continues to convince people that it's spherical. Ha ha ha, you fool. How dare you believe NASA's lies? Oh my God, it was founded by Nazis. Actual Nazis. Oh dear God. Anyway, that's what's happening. And let's take a look at our weather.gov map. So we've got lots of winter weather advisories there. Those purplish regions, those are winter weather advisories. We've got high surf around Hawaii. Drop us a line if you're enjoying some high surf or some volcanic activity down there on the Big Island especially. If your county's lit, click your county on weather.gov. It's a little bit too much information for us to cover all of that. So let's take a look at some forecasts instead. Here's our snow forecast. This is the positive snow depth change forecast based on the GFS model for the next 72 hours. Thanks for leaving comments, BMVR13. So that's our snowfall, and check out the heavy snows coming to California, yowzers. Some areas there expecting like four feet of snow in the northern portion of the state. Dag, that is some serious snowage. Oh my God, it must be a year without a summer, even though it's pushing winter time. Yes, it's not a grand solar minimum, by the way. It is not a grand solar minimum. It just isn't. Where are your zero sunspot days? Where are they? They're, they're not there, okay? So you've painted yourself into a corner with the grand solar minimum nonsense. Come out of the corner. Don't worry. We won't worry about the wet footprints all over the place. Don't make an idiot out of yourself. Look at the data. And look at the heavy weather coming to Northern California. Yowzers. Two pulses of massive weather there. That is a GFS pressure and precipitation forecast for the next 72 hours. And that will probably be accurate, folks. That's why we show three-day forecasts, because we don't like to spout nonsense on the channel. Next, checking out what's going on here with, what the heck are we looking at here? Snow depth, it's supposed to be. Let's press refresh. What happened, Wendy? Oh, my God, it's the whole system's breaking down, folks. Oh, dear God, it must be an alien invasion. Or perhaps it's perhaps it's the galaxy which is killing us. All right, so here is our snow depth forecast based on the Euro model. We're going to advance this to three days. And you can see some extra snow there showing up in the next three days. That is 
uh, quite significant. So the euro model there largely agreeing with the GFS model, especially for California, it looks like. And let's move on here to our NASA goes lightning mapper. As we see this low still hanging out here in the north central Atlantic, lots of lightning associated with that. Besides that, some lightning in Arizona and New Mexico, it looks like. But at the moment, things pretty calm here, according to lightningmaps.org, our real-time lightning map source powered by blitzogdung.org. So that's where the storms are happening now. We do have some lightning there in the eastern Mediterranean. Continuing on to our U.S. Doppler radar map, there are the full 50 states of ALSA, the allegedly United States of America, AUSA. We'll focus on the lower 48. Here's some heavy rains there around Louisville. Moving into Ohio here, about to strike Pittsburgh. It looks like some snow mixed in there indeed. Let's take a look at the shortwave radiation map showing clouds and fog for the lower 48. There you go. That's a 3.9 nanometer radiation satellite. Here's the water vapor satellite. What happened? Oh, my God. It's a blackout. Dear God, it's a blackout. What? Are, oh, my God. What's happened? The satellite's been destroyed. It's the, it must be the galaxy, folks. It must be the galaxy. Galaxies are big. Therefore, they are scary. There's the water vapor map. And, uh, yeah, an expanse of dry air here moving across Kansas, making for likely clear skies over most of the state of Kansas there. Another spot you could put an H on the map if you like. That is a high-pressure zone because of the mass of atmospheric nitrogen versus the mass of atmospheric water vapor. Here's your your recap. This is the U.S. Doppler radar. Thanks for leaving all those comments, everybody. Like Mark Kansas. Cheers. And there is the shortwave radiation map showing clouds and fog. It's too dark over part of the country there to use the visible satellite. And here is the water vapor map. That should clear up any issues you have with your Doppler radar not showing you the full picture. We think we showed you the full picture. Thanks for tuning in to the Smash News Network, least busted name in news. I've been your host, Dan, a.k.a. smash o -Mash, signing off. And may that solar wind be at your back. Opinion expressed in this video, not necessarily the opinions of Smash News Network, least busted name in news.